You see their tribe. You see there's, there's no marrow in the bone. You see they're scattered all over the valley. They ain't even full skeletons. I mean the bones are scattered all over the valley. They're just bones, but answer me a question, Ezekiel. Can these bones live? Ezekiel answers the only way he knows how to answer. Lord, you know. Critical race theory was born out of critical legal theory. Am I teaching y'all something today? There emerged two common beliefs linking all critical race theories. First, white supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's just a fact. That, that, how, how in the world are you going to fight against that being taught in any school? White supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's a fact. Why don't you want that to be taught in school? You, 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 you let your schools teach us that Columbus discovered America? That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that George Washington couldn't tell a lie? That's a lie. You, you let your schools teach us that some slave owners were beneficent and good slave owners. There were no good slave owners. Anybody who owned people was evil. That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that Abraham Lincoln was good for Negroes. No, Abraham Lincoln was trying to save the Union. And Abe Lincoln himself said if he could save the Union and keep black people in chains, he would do it. That's a lie. Come on, somebody. You let them teach us about a white Jesus? Uh, you let them teach us uh, uh, that Native Americans were the aggressors? Uh, come on, somebody. That, 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 that white folk had a manifest destiny and that the pilgrims uh, were good at Native Americans? That's a lie all day, every day. You let them teach us lies all throughout my history in school. I was taught lies, uh, but you got a problem with critical race theory because it teaches the truth uh, that white supremacy has subordinated black people and people of color the right to bear arms uh, let me just back up a little bit and let me take you on back to the late 1960s when Ronald Reagan was the governor of California and they were oppressing black folk and uh, a group of, of men and women uh, known as the Black Panther Party mm -hmm, decided that they were going to defend the rights of black folk. And the Black Panthers uh, uh, decided that the Second Amendment wasn't just for white folk. So they strapped themselves with guns and showed up at the Capitol in California and when they saw them Negroes with guns come on somebody that's why I say if you ever really want to get gun laws changed just is strap all these Negroes up to that they'll change them laws before the week is over when the Black Panthers watch this I want you to really they, they, the, 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 the California legislator uh, passed what was called the Mulford Act was a gun control act that decided who could get guns who couldn't get guns what could be in your background what couldn't be in your background it was the first time in history that the national rifle association the nra supported restrictive gun legislation all because black folk had the nerve to get strapped look at your neighbor and say neighbor go get strapped <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all gonna say Bishop told us to get strapped. I said it. Go get strapped. It just got real quiet up in here. But y'all already know I'm a triple P. Amen. Y'all know what a triple P is, right? A pistol packing preacher. Amen, somebody.
Peace. Peace and blessings, family. Good morning. Welcome to the Black Love Experience. TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. I got a little John Coltrane on in the background. Go to iHeartRadio or TuneIn Radio or WTCCFM.org if you want to listen. I have some music coming up shortly that y'all can listen to, but you know, Facebook be tripping on me, so I can't I can't play it for y'all. Unfortunately. But it sound good in my headphones. <laughs> it sound good in my headphones. Do me a favor, tell a friend, tell somebody Bishop is on the air right now. I'm on the air right now. Got some things to talk about. Got some things to talk about. About to play a little bit of Otis. Then I'll put on some stuff y'all can hear. Trying to get my YouTube church set up. Trying to get my YouTube and my Instagrammers on. I got a little Otis on right now. Oh, she may be weary, y'all. Young girls, they do get weary. Wearing that old shaggy dress. All right, let me get my Instagrammers on here. I can't leave my Instagrammers high and dry. There we go. Peace to the gram. Good morning. Never possess. Like, share, subscribe. Rep your city, rep your town. Try a little tenderness. Let's see. Sentimental. Trying to monitor my Instagram. There we go. It makes it easier. You won't regret it, no. Put my phone on Do Not Disturb because somebody always calling me while I'm on the radio. Try a little tenderness. Don't tease her. Today I'm talking about the um, 
I got black friend syndrome. Nah, nah, nah. You know, y'all all got them friends who be like, you know, I'm, I got black friends, so, um, you know, so, so, you know, I got black friends and all that. So, you know, um, that means I ain't racist. All right, let me give y'all some music y'all can hear. Let's get it. Rep your, rep your city, rep your town. Talk to me. I see you, Texas, in the house. I see you, Houston. Good morning. A positive attitude says everything about you. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Every day you get up, you've been given a gift. That's why they call it the present. And it's up to you of how you unwrap it. So yesterday is history. Tomorrow's a mystery. Today is a gift. Today's a gift. Don't let the pain of your past bleed into your present and poison your future. Stop replaying the movie. Why did this happen to me? When it's done with you, be done with it. it. If it seems like you keep running into pigeons, you're flying too low. That you're flying too low. So set your sights a little higher. Remember, eagles fly by, by themselves. themselves. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Allow your challenges to be a stepping stone to propel you into new possibilities. So be discontent with your past accomplishment. You're only as great as your last success. Only so as great as your last success. Your passion. Remember this. Within every seed, there is a tree. In every tree, there is a forest. Who and what you were born into is simply the environment to prepare you for your ultimate purpose. It was not a setback. It was a setup. Your purpose and potential is bigger than your past pain or problem. To you. To you. All right, let's get this. You let it talk. All right, come on, rep, 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 rep your city, rep your town. I don't see y'all repping. Where y'all at? Much of life is about sacrifice. You gotta give up something to get something. Success is not about what you've accomplished, but it's what you have. Where y'all at? Where y'all coming in from? Clarksdale, Mississippi. Which qualifies you for the next level. You have to be willing to face your challenges. Chicago. Most people drive 12,000 miles a year moving forward. The most I see you, Lady Hilliard. You gotta stay focused on what's Come on, where y'all coming in from? Rep, rep, rep it. It's your daily routine that determines your success or failure. Whatever you practice at is what you become great at. What's more important than being intelligent is having the right attitude. Respect costs you nothing, but it will cost you everything. Cost you everything. So don't be too smart for your only good. Remember, her head makes a soft behind. What's more important than your five senses is common sense. The heart of a fool is in his mouth, but the heart of a wise man is in his character. So don't sweat the small things. The answer for a short temper is a long walk. Be slow to speak, quick to listen, and remember this. You haven't lived long enough to know everything. New York the City. Is what matters most. Good morning. Once you have been labeled with a bad reputation, it's hard for people to see you any other way. A good name is worth more than all the money in the world. Your life is broken up into three parts. First you learn. Then you earn. Then, then you return. You got to give back. 90.7. WTCC. Good morning. And welcome to the Black Love Experience. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan II. TGIF, thank God it is Friday. Welcome, welcome to the weekend. Uh, I want to thank Deacon Ernie Johnson, my frat brother, 
um, for bringing us up until the nine o'clock hour uh, with that good gospel music. You can hear Deacon Ernie Johnson and Minister or Elder Rick Robb every Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. bringing you the best in gospel music. Great way to end your week and jump into the weekend. Uh, so we start out the week with gospel with um, Kenneth Barnett and we end the work week uh, with gospel. Uh, and I get to be behind both of them. Uh, 413-736-2781. 413-736-2781. Uh, tell a friend, tell somebody, Bishop is on the air. If you're in the social media spaces, rep your city, rep your town. Let me know where you are chiming in from i got humble texas in the house i got chicago in the house i got new york city in the house i got raleigh north carolina in the house i got houston texas in the house i saw clarksdale mississippi uh up in the building i got kansas city kansas i got i hope i, hope I pronounced this right abuja nigeria okay I got them all the way from the motherland in the house. I got uh, Johnstown, New York in the house. Got another Nigeria in the house. All right, so Africa is up in here. Good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every single one of you. I got Los Angeles, California. Yeah, there's my Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh, I got Philadelphia in the house. Somebody wants me to play Puffy and Meek Mill's new song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not today. <laughs> Chicago is in the building. Good morning, Chicago. Um, let's see. I got Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee. That's the home of the Church of God in Christ. Good morning. Good morning to each and every. And then I got the phone ringing. I don't. I got Natchez, Mississippi, in the building. Let me. Let me. I, I, it's dangerous when you answer the phone before you start your conversation. You never know what they want. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Springfield, Bishop. All right. Good morning, Springfield. Yes. All right. Appreciate you. Springfield, Massachusetts, checking in by telephone. <laughs> good morning to everybody. Riley, uh, let's see, jumped in another Riley, jumped in there. Um, Boiling Springs, North Carolina. Boiling Springs, North Carolina. Check it in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to every single Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, jumped in the mix. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Greenville, South Kakalaki in the mix. Good morning to you. Good morning, caller. Yes, checking in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Bro all right, Brooklyn's in the house. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, Brooklyn is in the house. Who else is up in here? All right, uh, Pensacola, New Jersey is in the house. Good morning, good morning, good morning on this TGIF. Thank God it is Friday edition of the Black Love Experience. Shout out. To State Rep Ben Swan, longtime host of the Black Love Experience, uh, and to each and every single one of you that are in the field, uh, that are in house. I see you, Tony Taylor. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Stand up. That's right. Stand up, 413. Get on up. Uh, Cape Verde is in the house. Detroit, Michigan is in the house. Me from Hollywood. Okay. Hollywood, California, in the building. Good morning to each and every one of you. Listen, we'll take some more check-ins and we'll get to our subject matter today. Listen, I'm going to update you on what happened at the Southwick School Committee meeting. And then uh, my subject today, listen, proximity to blackness does not mean you're not racist. Okay. You know, we call that the I got black friends syndrome. Yeah, I got black friends. I dated a black man. I got a black child. None of that stuff means you're not racist. We'll deal with it. I know. I know people don't like to hear that, but that's the way it is. I'm a Dora City. 
I don't know where that is. I'm a Dora City somewhere. Good morning. Good morning from Morocco. I got my international audience. Kigari Rwanda is in the building. Rwanda has checked into the building. Uh, Zimbabwe has checked into the building. Uh, what's up, frat? Uh, my fraternity brother from Somerville, South Carolina is up in the building. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody who's coming from everywhere. There's a little bit of Rhonda Swan. This is called a response to the sellout. We're going to come back on the other side of this. Tell a friend, tell somebody, Bishop is on the air. Don't y'all go nowhere. We'll be right back. You say you sold out because black women are loud and crass. What? And your precious white woman is the epitome of class? What? Are you so blind that you cannot see? Open your that Girl, Charlie ain't got nothing on me. For hundreds of years, we have stood by your side, accepted your flaws, and, and allowed you your pride. pride. Bore your children and cleaned up your mess, satisfied your lust, and always settled for less. We have stayed in the background and allowed you to lead, yes, trusting in your strength and ability to succeed, never getting the praise and credit we, we deserve, deserve, but having the courage, the will, and the nerve, for being the backbone that has kept it together for you and our children in all kinds of weather. And now suddenly you say we're not good enough for you. We forced you to sell out because of the things we did. Well, where was that white woman when that white man you hate was cracking the whip? Cracking the whip. In the boardroom, the warehouse, and on the slave ship. On the slave ship. She stood by his side and didn't say a word, waiting for her own chance to rule and be heard. And now it's her you turn to and treat like a queen? And me and my sisters you choose to demean? Well, hold up, wait a minute, and stop the damn bus. Because there are a few things I need to remind you about us. A more beautiful creature God never made than an African woman, no matter her shade. High, yellow, red bone, or cocoa, cocoa brown. brown. We are more than worthy of wearing a crown. Ebony, mocha, or black as the night. It is we who have always shared in your plight. We are passionate, spiritual, loving, loving and kind. kind. A more generous heart you'll never find than the one that beats inside the body of a Nubian queen. The hardest working, loving, giving woman you've ever seen. But we give and forgive until there's little left. Then we're forced to put up our guard to avoid your theft. Your theft. The theft of our hearts and our trust, the very nature of our soul, by our so-called brothers who are just playing a role. And you wonder why some of us act as we do? Take a look in the mirror, because the answer is you. It's not enough that the white man has always tried to keep us down. But our own men act as though they'd love to see us drown. And white women have never invited us to join their equal rights struggle. So we're out here alone with the million things we juggle. Raising the children that black men leave behind. And dealing with the racism of the daily corporate grind. Damn, it's no wonder some of us are loud. Hell, we're just trying to be heard. To be In heard. a world where everyone, including our men, ignore our every word. Where are the brothers who understand a black woman's work? Right here, right here. Who will protect and stand by us? For we are the salt of this earth. We birthed you, raised you, and showered you with love. It was we who taught you to love your creator above us. Right. We gave you all we had and taught you to be men. Open your eyes. It is us, your black sisters, not both not both Derek's kind. A perfect ten. And one final word for the sellout to claim to be brothers. When you turn your back on us, you disrespect your mothers. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did y'all hear that? This is a response to the sellout. You know who you are. 413-736-2781. 413-736-2781. Shout out to Daniel. <laughs> Shout out to Zimbabwe. Shout out to Morocco. 
shout out to Nigeria. Um, you know, they they coming from all over the motherland today. All right, you know, all over the motherland is up in the building today. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everybody uh, that is chiming in on all of our uh, various platforms. Um, wonderful to have you uh, with us on this Friday morning, the Black Love Experience. You can tune in every Friday um, at nine o'clock. Uh, and then, of course, um, catch us on the spoken word on Monday. Um, of Hope Church of God in Christ. It is Women's History Month. And we got the sisters preaching all month long. I got the whole month off except for the last Sunday. Uh, it's Resurrection Day. So, Pastor, got to preach on that day. Um, but I got the next three weeks off. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Bishop Swan. This is Annalise. Swanza, how are you? I'm listening from Kansas City. I'm fair to Midland. How you doing? Good. I had to call and say shout and give a shout out from Kansas City and say I'm still waiting on us to get together. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, we we gonna make that happen for show, sure, for show, sure, for show. Sure. You're coming here when? Yes, I'm coming there March 28th. But listen, good topic today. I just wanted to just give you a reminder. I'm still I'm still out here. Let's make sure we put it on the calendar. <laughs> all right. Bless you now. Right now. Bye. Bye-bye. 413 Dr. Annalise Fonza uh, is coming here to Springfield. Um, um, and she's going to be doing some things. And, and we're going to get her on the air. And we're going to talk about it. 413-736-2781. So proximity to blackness. I don't, I don't understand how people don't get that um being close to black people having black friends having a black ex-girlfriend having a black wife black husband having a baby by a black guy uh you know uh i, I don't i don't I'm, I'm 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 not understanding or having a baby by a black woman um why they don't get that 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 doesn't mean you're not racist your proximity to blackness has nothing to do with whether or not you are racist have the propensity to be racist have the proclivities of a racist um have unconscious bias or any of that uh, somehow many think that if I'm altruistic enough to associate myself with you all, that you all should feel privileged to be around my whiteness. That's how I read that. Um, you should know that I'm not racist because I've allowed you all to be in my presence. That's what that says to me. That's, that's how I read that. It's the epitome of racism to tell me you're not racist because you're around black people. I grew up around black people. That means I'm not racist. Fat Joe, I should be able to use the N word because I grew up in Brooklyn around black people. So, you know, I can say the N word even though I'm not black. You know, um, <laughs> this this is insane, um, and 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 that broke out in the in the meeting that we had with the um, school committee in Southwick, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Um, now, some of y'all might remember uh, Ralph Northman, who was the governor of Virginia. And there was this picture that went around the internet of him wearing blackface. All right. Um, 
and the and and the excuse that they made to try to absolve him of that very racist act uh, was that you know when he was a kid you know he grew up um um and black and white people got along you know uh you know black and white people got along they played basketball and football together they you know went crab fishing together um they, they wanted you to know that ralph northman couldn't have had a racist bone in his body how many times have y'all heard that like like where a white person does something that is so egregious so openly racist and then when they get called on the carpet about it when they get called to accountability about it what is it that they always say they don't have a racist bone in their body or like donald trump would say i'm the least racist person that you would know and they want you to know that they got black friends you know, and they're the last person on the planet that would be racist. And then, and then, and then to prove that they're not racist, they have other white people. <laughs> That's what kills me is they have other white people come to tell you how they're not racist. That's what happened at the, I kid you not. We went to the Southwick School Committee meeting to support uh, the Lopez family and the black families that have been subjected to racism in that school district literally for years. And that exact thing happened was a white person stepped up to tell black people how those those white people could not be racist. Let, let me let me give you a word to the wise to my non melanated brothers and sisters okay <laughs> understand you are not the person to tell black people that your white friends or associates or colleagues can't be racist that message doesn't go over well. It don't even go over well when a black person stands up and tells us that a white person who has done something egregiously racist isn't racist. That it don't it don't even work when black people do it. You know, when black people got up to tell us Donald Trump wasn't racist, like, you know, yeah, get out of my face. We didn't believe Diamond and Silk. We didn't believe Herman Cain. You know, we didn't believe uh mark burns we didn't believe amorosa who changed her tune <laughs> when he got rid of her um we we don't believe black people when they tell us that blatantly racist white people aren't racist what makes you think we're gonna believe it when white people tell us that <laughs> so they they did that in in virginia when governor northman when they found his um, uh, his school yearbook, um, and he had on blackface standing next to somebody wearing a Ku Klux Klan robe. <laughs> oh God! No, that's that was just in fun. That was that wasn't racist. That, just because I'm wearing blackface. And I'm standing next to my boy in a clan robe. That don't mean we're racist because we got black friends. And that's that's what they're trying to do in this Southwick situation. Just because these young white kids were holding a mock slave auction online. And we're bidding on their black classmates.
for two and four dollars. <laughs> that don't mean they're racist. They didn't bid on none of the white kids. If they're not racist, if they, if they believe everybody's equal, why didn't they bid on the white kids? You know, just because they did that, that doesn't mean that they're rich. And the irony of this is all over America, they're trying to strip certain parts of American history out of the curriculum and stop you from teaching it, okay? They don't want you to teach in America's schools that they had such things as slave auctions because white kids might feel bad if they know that their great grandmama and them was at these slave auctions buying black people, it'll make them feel bad. So we want to strip that part out of the history books. So it's amazing how you want to strip any mention of slave auctions out of the history books, but somehow these young white kids knew about slave auctions. And if they didn't learn it in school, where they get it from? Hmm? Where they get it from? So it's amazing to me how some white parents don't want their children to learn about racism in school, but they have no problem teaching them how to be racist at home. Let me say that one more again for the people in the back. It's amazing how some white folks some white parents don't want their children to learn about racism in school, but have no problem teaching them how to be racist at home. Because if they weren't being taught how to be racist at home, They wouldn't be having slave auctions online. Mm. Yeah. The Negro Black Knights Heritage Club. You got the microphone. Hello. Good morning, um, Bishop. How are you doing today? I'm good. You? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, I, I like the conversation um, a lot um, uh, in regards to like dating relationships and how... Um, just because you date somebody in our community does not make you exempt from racism and stuff of that nature. Um, I will go even one step further with other people outside of our lineage, as in um, people from the diaspora. Like there are certain types that have the same mindset as white supremacists, mm -hmm. even historically. Um, I posted a book to kind of justify the conversation that I'm having mm -hmm. and saying that there are melanated people that have the same view views as a white supremacist. Yeah. Because they come from that slave trading culture. I, I think the more that we explore our differences uh, from the diaspora, and, um, and uh, um, I think the better off we'll be as a community, having self-ethnic pride in who we are as a people. Absolutely. Appreciate you, bro. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning. quickly uh that statement that was read uh from that uh fifth show from the student exchange program was so it was coordinated and it was so disingenuous uh i think it was probably more on we had to try to make them look like they weren't racist but she never dealt with the reality of the issue of why we were there and, uh, and and so, like you said, uh, oh, well, like what was said in the meeting, they never even apologized to that young lady who has been out of school for three weeks now, if or more, and allowed the students after two days that uh, committed this offense against her 
and allowed them, uh, well, gave them a two-day suspension and allowed them to be back in the school. And they never really dealt with that and tried to explain why that was racist and that wasn't fair. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate you. And that's coming from someone who was at the meeting. And let me tell you what he was referring to. So so you get the un full understanding. So while we're at the meeting, and this is the school district where they held the slave auction, where they're calling um, black kids the N-word um, and doing all kinds of um, egregious um, uh, racially based um, debauchery. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, the chairman of the school committee read a statement that I'll sum up like this. Um, racism is bad. We don't tolerate racism. We investigated this. We did the proper discipline. We did everything right. Everybody agrees that we did everything right. That's in a nutshell what he was saying. So this white woman named Charlene Diaz. Don't let the last name fool you. That's that that's her married name. Um, she's a complete Karen, hundred percent. So she got up, read a statement, talked about how she worked in the student exchange program, met in the Metco program for years, um, and through all of the years that she worked in the Metco program. She's only known three or four racial incidents that have ever happened. Now, th that's the first level of caucasity. Caucasity is having white audacity. Privileged white audacity. She had the caucasity to state that, that the only time there were ever racist incidents in Southwick over the last 25 years were the times that she heard about it. So if she didn't hear about it, it didn't happen. So there's only been four times over 25 years. Now, um, Skylar Lopez reported at least five incidents herself. Okay, th th this young 13-year-old black girl. This is before the slave auction. Had reported at least five incidents herself. But I guess since Miss Diaz didn't hear about those, they don't exist. See, that's what white privilege does, that I'm white and I say so. If I say it didn't happen, it didn't happen. It doesn't matter what your experience is. And that often happens to black people. White folks basically negate and erase our lived experience. That if we don't agree that it happened, it then I don't care what you experience. If we weren't there to see it, and even if we saw it, if we don't agree that it's racist, it's not racist. Because a lot of times white folks see stuff that's racist and say it ain't racist. They saw uh, uh, Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck and murder him. And they still said that wasn't racist. He died of a fentanyl overdose. It ain't got nothing to do with this cop with his knee on his neck while he's saying, I can't breathe. So even sometimes when they see stuff, they'll still deny that it happened, that it was racist. That's called Cassidy for you. So she says, in 25 years, there's only four racist incidents that ever happened, and they handled them all properly. So the heck with the testimony of all of the parents that have come forth, all of the parents that have written to me, that have written to Miss Lopez, that have stated we left the school district because of racism. We sold our house and moved out of Southwick because of racism. Forget all of them. Forget the alumni. 
who started a petition, people who graduated from the Southwick Regional High School, who started a petition that has several thousand signatures on it and has hundreds of stories. If you read that online petition, people will give you the reason that they signed. And time after time after time, you hear someone say, I was a student there. This happened to me while I was there. So because Ms. Diaz didn't see it or she doesn't agree that it was racist or that it happened, it couldn't have happened. So the heck with the testimony of all of those people, all of those several thousand people who signed that petition and who gave their stories. Nah, the heck with them. The heck with the parents who stood up at the meeting and said, this happened to my child. The heck with the young people that stood up at the meeting and said, this is what I witnessed here as a student. I mean, they will literally discount the lived experience of people if it doesn't fit into their narrative. It's like what Donald Trump said, you know, don't believe what your eyes see. Your eyes are giving you fake news. Don't, don't, you know, just don't believe that Eric Garner got choked to death. This was about him selling new cigarettes. Not about the cop choking him, even though you can see it on film. Don't believe it. Don't believe Jason Van Dyke is guilty of murdering Laquan McDonald, even though it was on video, him shooting an unarmed black man walking the other direction in the back. 16 times. Don't believe it. Don't believe Walter Scott was murdered, even though he's running away from the cop and the cop unloaded eight bullets in his back. Don't believe the real lived experience of black people. So Ms. Diaz goes on to say, none of these people are racist. These school committee members aren't racist. People who work for the school district aren't racist. The teachers aren't racist. The parents aren't racist. And the students ain't racist. Ain't nobody racist. And then she went and sat down. So, of course, Miss Lopez checked her when she got up and had words. When I had remarks, I respectfully said that non-melanated people do not tell us what is and what is not racist. You, you can't, you, you, you don't tell us how well you handled a situation regarding racial bullying of our children. We'll tell you whether you handled it properly. You don't beat your chest and tell us that we wouldn't be at this meeting had you handled it properly. You wouldn't have 100 people storming your meeting, including people from your own community, non-melanated people from your own community. Wouldn't be there had you handled it properly. So while I'm telling them not to tell us how well you handled the situation. Ms. Diaz is screaming from her seat how she can talk about it because I'm married to a Latino and I have an African-American child. So in other words, because I choose to sleep with Black people, Latino folks, because I share my bed with melanated people, I can lecture black people on racism. Let me be clear to my non-melanated listeners, my non-melanated brothers and sisters, your proximity to blackness does not make you an expert on blackness. 
I don't care if you up in a black neighborhood. I don't care if you hung out with the homies when you was growing up. I don't care if you like hip hop. I don't care if you eat curry goat and oxtails and collard greens. I don't care if you like sweet potato pie. I don't care if you know how to do the electric slide. I don't care if you crip walk. It doesn't get you any closer to being black, living as a black person, or experiencing what black people experience. You never are authorized to lecture us on our experience. Let me be clear with that. Your proximity to us and to our experience doesn't give you the shared experience because at the end of the day, you're still white. You still benefit from white privilege. And when the cops pull you over, they ain't going to treat you like us. So Ms. Diaz wanted you to know that because she's married to a Latino and because obviously she has slept with a black man if she's got an African-American baby, that because I prefer dark meat, that means I can lecture dark people. No. That's not how that works. Let me let me let me let me help you. Because you know, I, I get it. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Thomas Jefferson knew that. Yeah. And he raped his black enslaved property and i know that white folks have tried to remix history and turn the interaction between thomas jefferson and sally hemmings into a love story and have started calling it a relationship let's be clear when you are a white slaveholder who wants to have sex with the enslaved black person that you are holding as a slave, they do not have the benefit of choice. Knowing that refusing, A, wouldn't have meant it wouldn't happen anyway, and B, could have cost her her life. So when you're faced with the prospects that you're going to get raped no matter what, or you're going to die resisting, let's not pretend Sally Hemings could have said no. Let's not pretend he didn't start raping her when she was 14 years old what we would call today a pedophile. So they're trying to remix history and make a pedophile rapist, which is what Thomas Jefferson was. They're trying to change the story of a pedophile president raping the enslaved black women that he held into a love story. And guess what, Charlene Diaz? Thomas Jefferson had children by Sally Hemings. He had half black children. Did that make him not racist? Hmm. Did that make him not racist? And you, do you know what he did with those black children he had? He enslaved them. He didn't free them. He didn't say, son, here's your freedom papers. 
you my son, you my daughter, you can go free. No, they went right, right back out in the cotton fields with the rest of the slaves. Amir, you got the microphone. Hey, hey Bishop, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm driving, so let me know if you can't hear me. I might go in and out. But um, great, great, um, great topic um, and great space. Uh, to your title, dating black people don't mean you're not racist. Exactly. And you actually took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say, you know, uh, enslavers rape black women had uh, biracial children and still put them in chains and sold them off. We're not okay, so sorry, can you hear me okay? Okay, you're back. <laughs> um, yes, had, you know, biracial children put them in, slave, uh, put them, uh, in chains and slave them. So we're not dealing with, uh, you know, rational uh, human beings. Um, but thank you so much. I did say a little prayer. When you, um, when y'all were up there at uh, six um, on Tuesday, I said a little prayer of protection. Um, but what gets me is that uh, they, Southwick High School has had a history of racism, and um, I think at this point we would have to go to the South Carolina Board of, um, sorry, not South Carolina, the U.S. Board of Education, because with the history and their just ineptitude and inability to just expel these um these races uh i'm gonna say cracker confederates you know how i get down um because at the end of the day the, the daughters the daughters of the confederacy um has infiltrated our public school system yeah. since the early 1900s if we're not aware of that mm -hmm. um so just that's just also something to think about um but yes to your title um people it is it does not pay out to be a token Negro, um, you know, even though you might have non-melanated people that you're married into, sit them down because the children is what is going to hurt the most. As we see, a 13-year-old that's just getting into high school is met with racism in a high school that is known for its racism. Oh, yeah, before I do go, um, I did speak to a police officer um, the day they had that the day um, of the actual, um, they came back, and he was just so giddy when he he was like, "Yeah, um, my daughter uh, went through uh, knows about the racism here." And I said, "Well, why don't you inform your friends and family who uh, not only did they take off their robes and become you know judges, doctors, they're now police officers." And he had nothing to say to me. So it sounds like that y'all have a really big problem. Um, we have a problem here. Um, just a quick, F, uh, you know, FYI, Myrtle Beach, you know, there was a cross burning uh, recently. Um, but that's, you know, that's neither here or there. But um, all in all, great space. And I am praying uh, a protection over you and your loved ones and also the Lopez family. Take care. Thank you, sis. Yes, yes, yes. The... Um... And, and that thing about taking it to the federal level, that's that's in the works. That's in the works. See, Southwick thinks this is just going to blow over. That that's that that's what they, they think. They think this is just going to blow over. It's not. It's not. We're getting more and more support. Um, more and more resources are coming our way to deal with this situation. Um, we are talking with. Um, the lawyers for civil rights and others um, and things like bumping it up from the state level to the federal level are in the works. Um, uh, Southwick School District will not just ride out this storm and then go back to doing business as usual. Um, five minutes before the hour of 10 o'clock coming up at 10 o'clock is mr don felton um with mid-morning jazz um he's going to make it smooth and personal uh, for you so stay tuned um for that coming up if you're looking for a place to worship check us out at the spring of hope church of god in christ 35 alden street springfield massachusetts 
the Brick Church right there at Six Corner. There'll be prayer, praise, and preaching. We're building better tomorrows by changing lives today. 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. Uh, the incident that happened at, in Southwick is not only racist, um, isn't it uh, against the bullying policy? Absolutely. Absolutely. It absolutely is. And they continue to violate their bullying prevention and intervention policy. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Bishop. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, just before you get off, there's a, we have another issue. Um, not just with South Bay, but you probably want to look into Cromwell. A high school as well. I mean, it's even worse there, and they're really rising up. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Four minutes. Four minutes, Dougie Fresh. You're on. Uh, 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 on. Um. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, because um, you know we're we're putting the pressure on. Black Knight. You got the mic. Give you the microphone first so you can bust like a bubble. Let's see. Did I put you on here? I thought I did. Let me see. All right. Maybe not. All right. So listen. Listen. Having black friends does not mean you're not racist. And black people, let me say this to y'all. Okay? And this is important. Y'all stop inviting everybody to the proverbial cookout. Okay? Stop with the, you know, because your white friend can do the wobble <laughs> you know can can talk that talk and use our slang and our idioms and and all of that kind of stuff stop please y'all stop inviting them to the cookout because they like sweet potato pie everybody don't belong at the proverbial cookout and stop giving them n-word passes See, that's the problem. Some of y'all giving them N-word passes while they're around y'all. And then when they get around us, they, you know, people want to fight. Because they think, because I can say, hey, what up my N-word to you? That they think that that gives them the, the green light to, to call everybody they N-word. So stop giving out invitations to the cookout. And stop handing out N-word passes, okay? I'm out your way. <laughs> Coming up next, Don Felton with Mid-Morning Jazz. He's going to make it smooth. He's going to make it personal. Uh, keep it locked right here on WTCC FM. Check me out on Monday. I'll be back on the spoken word. Um, so you don't want to miss it. You want to be a part of that. Until the next time I talk to you and you talk to me, always remember. God loves you, and so do I. Yeah, yeah. Look at me, I'm all the way turned up. I ain't smoking, but my homie in here burnt up. Yeah, I'm working.